soil is the basis of terrestrial life all terrestrial life every living things on the planet depends on soil and yet this material which is hidden beneath the surface of the earth is under appreciated not recognized dr lal is very interested in knowing how agriculture can be sustainable and what practices can be shown are not sustainable. So what we have been trying to do is see if we can restore the health of the soil. If you raise the soil quality in the world, you've raised food for people. We're gonna have nine billion people uh, in the foreseeable future. Soil is what's gonna, <laughs> so is everything. Here's the cover crop that you want. These are, these are radishes and they're planted, they put a big root down the ground about that big and about that deep that break up the soil. Notel farming is in simple word, plowless agriculture. Do not plow the land. Plowing was necessary because of weed control, but now we know control weed by other methods other than plowing. The cobs and the fodder are back on the ground. I want you to look to see that there's a complete ground cover. Well, in today's atmosphere, with the world thinking about climate change, Dr. Lau is really the guru of, of carbon sequestration. And carbon sequestration is the low-hanging fruit that we could get. We can store carbon in the ground prevent it from going in the atmosphere and improve soil productivity and or food production for the world. At the same time, we have younger generation getting education in that. You know, I feel very privileged. Uh, I had 112 students so far, 175 visiting scholars, uh, 56 postdoctor fellow, 350 people from around the world. So they are ambassadors, not only of this science, what we are doing, but also of the Ohio State University. They carry that Ohio State flag with them, wherever they go. So right here, we just harvested a one square meter uh, plot uh, for the corn, and we're gonna uh, quantify the total fresh weight of the sample and then later on quantify the amount of grain and biomass yield for that one square meter. Plants are roughly 50% carbon and so you can take the yield of a crop, say corn, and you can translate that to carbon and determine how much carbon is going to be in the soil. Once we have these yields we can translate that to carbon, feed it into the model. At this point, the experiment started in Hoytville and no-till was implemented and you can see that carbon follows a different trajectory. Look at the difference in these treatments. If we can do no-till and we can do, have better yields and better um, soil health, then that's an argument to put forward to farmers to say, you, know what, you really would, should look at this and consider this because it's not only helping your bottom line, it's, it's helping the people you feed. So it's a win-win. It's a win -win. It's a great example to me of what is so important about science and what's important about the best science. When you, you make discoveries that change the way the world's experts in your field think about the work that they do. And that is what uh, Dr. Lal has done. As long as you are consuming the natural resources, food, water, elements coming from the soil, you owe it to soil to put something back, to give something back, whatever you can. Otherwise, we have no right to eat. We, as a human society, we think about short-term gains, short-term profit, more than long-term sustainability. That challenge 
is the motivator, is the driving force. Is that what drives me to travel? Even a day after I come from one place, I'll go to another place because I think it's important that I convey that message to policymakers, to heads of states. Just a message that the life depends on soil, that the human survival depends on soil. That's the challenge, that's the driving force. That is something that is never ending. It will continue long after I am gone.